Okay, Oscar fans, we know nothing in Hollywood goes according to script. Now, what about that best actress race? I think there could be some surprises. I'm Tom O'Neill of Gold Derby here with Pete Hammond of Deadline Hollywood. And Pete, here's my crazy scenario, okay? Yeah, let's okay. Just, just, this is all about fantasy Tom, in Hollywood. every time I talk to you, you will have to say it's a crazy scenario. <laughs> because I don't think you've ever had a scenario that wasn't crazy. Well, Pete, let me remind you, <laughs> who got best picture right last year and who got it wrong? I don't remember last year. <laughs> <laughs> Conveniently. Okay, okay. Yeah. Let's have some fun with best actors. Okay. Here's my kooky theory. Yeah. And I admit that many of my predictions are kooky. Yeah. But th and this one may be too far. <laughs> but look, America's swept up in, in the politics right now. The whole yeah. Donald Trump thing. Right. And Meryl Streep had, yeah. had the, the delightful gall to take him yes. out at the Golden Globes yeah. <laughs> in a magnificent way. Yeah. We have seen in the best actress race right. in the past where yeah. Hollywood has rallied behind a liberal firebrand, Jane right. Fonda. Yes. And... Uh, and we saw it played out in the race. My, my question is this. We have best actress. We have solid front runners in Natalie Portman, Emma uh, Stone, Isabel Huppert are all going to, I think, have a chance to win. And all of a sudden, if you throw Merle in there, yeah. uh, historic 20th nomination yep. and a transformative performance. Well, all of her performances are transformative oh, in one true. way or another. But, but Emma Stone's is not, and sometimes that helps. Right. You. I'm just kind of throwing more things on the, on the mural yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. All of think? these actresses have precedent for past years of where people have won. I think in Meryl Streep's case, you know, people have discounted her because, look, it is 19 nominations right, that she's had. It's a comedy and all that. It it's doesn't, three. Yeah. You know, it is a comedy, although they loved it. I saw it with a bunch of Academy members uh, in the summer. They had these special screenings at, at United Talent Agency, and, and, of course, they fed them afterwards. So it was all of the, these Academy members who just loved it. But I thought, well, you know, this will fade or whatever. And I think it did because the, the race is so incredible. You didn't even mention Annette Benning, who's an, a, a right, governor. Amy Adams. We have a lot to Amy go through Adams here, but so let's, let's stick with but, this. But Merrill is Merrill, and you know, look, you she need fewer votes to win this year if you, yeah. with such a packed race. And she's been nominated <coughs> 19 times, which right. indicates they'll pretty much nominate Merrill if she has any viable chance of a good And she of, did a, a get SAG role. and Golden Globe. That's yes. Uh, She's got the key nominations from BAFTA, from SAG, from Golden Globes. But that Golden Globe speech, which is really amazing because uh, she stole that show. And it was the Cecil B. DeMille Award. It wasn't the winners or anything. She lost her category, actually, to Emma Stone, predictably, you know, because they were going on a, a landslide for La La Land. But Meryl stole that show. And I think in the, there were five days still to vote after that and I think a lot of Hollywood loved what she did and they love her anyway so this would just give them an added incentive to nominate her so I think she's gonna be one of those five nominees she's one of the five I'm asking yeah. if she could win we know if she wins this will be number four she I don't think you can guarantee that she's one of the five Tom there's yes, too many people have I ever been wrong, <laughs> have I ever been wrong? oh please <laughs> all, right, all right let's keep going here let me count the ways <laughs> don't <laughs> uh, can she win is your question My, to can me. she win I think she can. Meryl Streep can always win. You know, it would be a real out of left field win this year. I think if she kept up the the kind of Trump thing, I think that that. First uh, of all, Meryl, I loved you in Florence Foster Jenkins. I thought that was the most phenomenal performance because you have to be believable as this bad singer who's not so bad that you wouldn't believe that she could fill Carnegie Hall and that people are there. And she's just a little off. And man. That performance, and plus there was heart underneath it. I thought it was great. It's underrated because she's so great. People just take it for granted. But boy, you look at those clips where she sings, it's and hilarious. It has the rooting factor. At the end, how the film just builds to this beautiful thing where you're actually rooting for this bad performer. Right. It just, it's, it's delightful. Yeah. All right, Amy Adams, uh, this is, uh, well, this, is this, would, would this be her sixth? Nine? Six. Six, yeah. yeah. Second in the lead actress category. Right. And then Annette Bening. Now, Annette yeah. Bening has underperformed, but she's an Academy governor. And she has been and beloved uh, in the Academy. And a, what a hell of an actress. I mean, you look at this, and this is arguably her best work on screen. I mean, and I, I hate to say that because she's done such great stuff. But she um, doesn't, she's not somebody who comes up, has an Oscar contender like Merle does every year or two. No. It's, it, it, it's, every, you know, it's a while in between her nominations. This would be her fifth. Yes. She's lost four times. 
Uh, um, she lost twice to Hillary Swank. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> poor thing. Now, yeah. Hidden Figures is doing so well at the box office. Yeah. We have to, and, and Taraji is so beloved as a kind of a winking devil on right. TV with Empire and past nominee for Benjamin Button. Yeah. She has a shot of getting That's in. That's gotten momentum, that movie, and that could bring her in. Um, a lot of people think she's supporting. And I don't know how they've uh, delineated that for the actors in any big way in their campaign. I don't think they have in a big way. All right, way. well, let's, let's talk about that. But, Viola you know, Davis, is, is there a chance for Viola to go be put in lead, just always. like we saw with Kate Winslet? Always, although that hasn't happened in any precursor um, awards yet this year. They've followed the paramount dictum that she's supporting, and they seem to be buying into that. And it's quite logical because... Uh, Mary Alice, who created that role on Broadway in 1987 in Fences, uh, was nominated for Featured Actress in a Play, Supporting. Which is supporting, yeah. And, uh, and, and then when uh, Viola was competing. And James Earl Jones was in the lead there. Then when Viola came in, they put them both in lead when she did the revival in 2010 with Denzel. They were both leads. Now it's reverted back with the movie version to a supporting role. But it's been both. So it's not like completely, some people say, oh, it's the lead and she could have won. You know, it's not the lead. I really think Denzel dominates this movie. Right, but there's no female that has a, no. a, a lead above her. She's but in we should also explain, by the way, one of the reasons that she was put in lead at the Tony Awards is that there is a rule that if your name is above the title, you have to be in lead. Yeah. And her name was above the title. So, But there is category confusion here. We could see a switcheroo here. Let's talk about Emily Blunt. Yeah. SAG nomination, <laughs> BAFTA nomination. Um, uh, the girl on the train uh, yeah. just kind of zoomed past it. Yeah, well, I mean, got terrible reviews. Uh, I liked it. I thought it was entertaining, trashy kind of movie, but I thought she was terrific in it. Emily Blunt's always good. Underrated. I was delighted to see her get these nominations. Stunned that she came up at SAG, but SAG, those nominating committees always have some uh, surprise. <laughs> right, and right, right. they liked her, even though she had not done a whole lot of Q&As or campaigning on this. She's been, you know, not Mark here. Mark Rylance didn't do too much campaigning last year didn't either. It happened him, right? Well, it didn't help him at SAG. But, um, <laughs> uh, you know, and then, and then now she gets a BAFTA nomination. Of course, she is British. But I, I cannot I keep making excuses for these nominations for Emily Blunt. So let's say Emily Blunt's got to be figured into this race, too. too. You cannot deny SAG and BAFTA nominations. Ruth Negga was certainly high up on the list early on. The yes. movie has been underperforming. Loving has. But she's still in the mix. Yes, right? and she's terrific. She didn't get a, a, a BAFTA. They didn't get anything at BAFTA. And she is, you know, works in Britain all the time. Um, She's so subtle. I think the biggest crime that they have in that movie is that they're so low key and subtle. Yes, this. There's no big scene. Yeah, right, so right. it's hard to compete with some of these other ones. In a year like this, where it's easy to crowd somebody out, Ruth Nega has fallen down the list. And, and that's a shame because she's so, so good. All right. Let's run through the Derby scenario here. And, and I have a uh, full disclosure to make here, and that is I am an unabashed fan of Jackie. Pete is always giving me grief about this. And I am, I ha and this is the great danger we have to say yes. about our business, is yeah. that when you become emotionally attached to yes. something, you should just divorce yourself from it. And sometimes uh, you can't. Well, sometimes she's great. I'm not giving you grief for Natalie Portman. Right, I'm just right. saying the I movie, don't think that's a best picture. Right, right, yeah. right. I still think it can get into best picture. Really? But here's Here's, here's Tom, I, I, what were you drinking before uh, you started this? It's got four or five uh, Guild nominations there. I think it, really. I think it's, what best picture race is it in currently? Well, <laughs> well how many best pictures was uh, Amer American Sniper in? Look, actually, it was in the Globes, right? <laughs> Look, here's American my Sniper. Yeah. Here's my question. Okay. And it's this: um, because Lala is not nominated for SAG Ensemble. Yeah. I think Emma wins there. Yeah, because uh, that's where you have to. That's where you can put your logical. I, 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 I agree with you on that. And also, that's a role where an actress is, uh, and yes. is playing an actress on auditions for I actors absolutely who are agree. voting. Yeah. Now that didn't help Michael Keaton any in Birdman. He but lost here to it Eddie. Well. Th this he well. Was, he was playing an actor, and so. But he was here, also. Here it, was a, it, it was a. It was a troubled so, character. My scenario is this. If we concede that Emma wins SAG, and yeah. normally that means that that yes. person carries on to the Oscars, I see I'm that still holding there. out my hope for Natalie for this reason. Yeah. It is, Emma's is not a transformative performance. Right. It's, uh, it's a fictitious character. They yeah. love things like Helen Mirren portraying the Queen of England. They right. love all that. And that's what Natalie's got going yeah. here for, it too. And there's another factor here, yeah. and that is that the, the demographic of the Academy voter, 60 plus, they know that they live through the whole Jackie thing, right, and, yeah. and this is such a compelling performance. Yeah. Anyway, 
I'm, the, I'm keeping Natalie at number one. For SAG. Uh, no, 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 I'm going with, I think I'll go with uh, Emma for yeah. SAG. Okay. But for the Oscars, I'm keeping Natalie uh, okay. number one. Do Good. you think there's... Um, one more category I could beat you in. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. Maybe Keep so, doing but... that, Tom. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so... Now, I'm not saying anything about Natalie. I, I did an actor's side with her. She's absolutely lovely. Uh, she was at the Golden Globes, though, and she didn't win there. And uh, she lost to Isabel Huppert at Let's, the Golden Globes, I know. and that was very interesting. And that, that we, we knew that that could happen, too, the yeah. Hollywood Foreign Press and the rest of it. Now, Isabel Huppert, let's talk about But I don't her. think you can lose the Golden Globe and SAG, and you're saying she's going to lose SAG. So now you're saying that she can lose the Golden Globe and SAG right. and win the Oscar mm -hmm. still? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Isabel Huppert, let's talk about it. Remember yeah. Emmanuel Riva a couple years ago? Yes. I think that... I picked her to win, right? Oh, that's right, you did. Oh, and my I, God. Uh, who won that year? Because they said, oh, my God, Pete, you've gotten us so nervous. You know, uh, they were freaking out. Right, was it... Uh, uh, it was... Um, uh, Meryl uh, Streep? Uh, no, 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 no. How she, could we She would never Shame freak out. Who beat Emmanuel Riva that was... Oh, it was Jennifer Lawrence. Okay. And uh, they said, you made us so nervous. And I said, well, you know, I'm seeing a, a, a groundswell there here. There was a groundswell. I think if there was another two weeks in that race, uh, Emmanuel could have pulled it. I think she actually was very close. I think it was close. very close, too. Yeah. So that leads me to Isabel. And that, in, in other words, I'm bringing up Emmanuel Riva as, as the case of the foreign yeah. actress who is beloved and hugely respected in the Not industry. just her. Marion Cotillard was nominated That's for good, the good, Belgian good movie. Mm -hmm. um, and, you had, and, of course, won for La Vie and Rose, which was another foreign movie. And then Transform you had uh, Charlotte Rampley, who's not in, an, uh, in a foreign language, but she is a, considered a, a, a one of those a actresses. Mature, yes. Yeah, in European a little, little actresses. Kind of, yes. yeah. So, can Isabel win? Yes. Isabel can win because Isabel's been on a, a, a role here. It's all up to Sony Classics to sell it. And they have to, like, stop doing the small ads and really go for it. And I think they're jazzed. You could see Michael Barker, who is co-president of Sony Classics, just go crazy at the Golden Globes when she won. They weren't expecting that. I mean, especially after it won the foreign language film at the Golden Globes. And they thought, well, that's what they're going to give her. She comes out beats Natalie Portman, beats the rest of them, and wow, she loved it. It was a great speech. Yes, I thought yes. she was going to have a heart attack. Yes. It was not the cool ice princess that we've come to know in so many films, you know, that she's played in the past. She's amazing. And actors revere her. If it was just actors voting in the finals, Isabel Huppert would be your Oscar winner this year. But it's not. It's also all the below the liners, and that tends to kill these foreign actresses when they go for the uh, final vote. But that Golden Globe win certainly didn't hurt. She doesn't have a SAG nomination, though. Emma Stone is in the movie that won everything at the Golden yeah. Globe, so we could see a sweep again at the Oscars here for La La Land. By the way, um, uh, Isabel does not have a BAFTA nomination either. It wasn't eligible. It wasn't eligible. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, Emma... Yes. We, I, I keep saying she could be this year's Jean Dujardin kind of thing, which is the again the, the, the artist parallel and, and a a uh, a role that is doesn't really have the kind of esoteric art house cachet that an Isabel Huppert performance has, for example. No. But but um, Emma does have the the uh, sweep factor that she could ride. They right? like her a lot. She sings. <laughs> she dances. Is, they love like Brie Larson, and Jennifer Gwyneth Lawrence, Paltrow, right, and right, right. all of those kinds of roles that do win. And I, I think that she's primed to win this thing, but also sings and dances sings and, and dances. does it all. And, 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 that, and that's impressive to Academy members when they Past look at her performance. Past nominee for Birdman. She's, she's yes. in the club. Yep. Um, I think definitely. Who's out front, do you think? Uh, I think Emma Stone is out front, and I think if she wins SAG, it'll be pretty much way out front. Ah, don't believe that part. Okay. Not while I bribe everybody Fine. in the Academy for Okay. Money. Then um, uh, Natalie Portman, I just find <laughs> it hard to believe Natalie Portman could lose SAG in the Golden Globe and suddenly come up and win here because she just won recently, not long ago, six years six ago. Six years ago. And, um, but that's within the honeymoon period she of people She is pregnant, and she was pregnant when she won before, right, so we're right, using right, right. that and as the thing. she's working it. A lot of people said... Oh, no, oh, she's been working it. But I know, but a lot of people said terrific. early on in this season that, she, I that love she's her. not available with the pregnancy oh. and all that. She's not going to be out there, but she's no. been She's a there. trooper and absolutely lovely to interview. Right. I, I thought she was terrific and absolutely amazing in this movie. You know, you could discount this as an imitation of Jackie Kennedy because everybody, what they're talking about is the voice. and how, But when I interviewed her, she went through that and it was so tricky because she said, well, you know, it's sort of... I can't do it, but <laughs> it's it starts out as Long Island where she came from and then it goes to the 
finishing school. They add that on, you know, and, and that was Jackie. And she really didn't do an imitation as much as interpret what she heard and, and brought it to a different level than we've ever seen before with this person we only thought we knew or didn't know at all. And I thought it was a remarkable performance. I think she's hurt by the fact that she, she is a winner already. There's so many ways to go in this race. You haven't brought up again Annette Benning. my okay. God. Uh, this is so overdue. We're talking about Merrill. We're talking about these people. Here is Annette Benning. We had to sit there and watch her lose twice to Hillary Swank, which was painful because Hillary was great in both those movies. Luck of the draw that Annette, Annette should have should have won that for first American time. Beauty, yeah. She should have yeah, won absolutely, there. I know. She should have. She was great in the Grifters in a supporting role. Um, always terrific. Uh, a favorite at the Academy. I just worry that the movie is not big enough to overcome some of these other projects here. Who's running the best ground game? And let me explain this here. I would say, and I think you would too, that uh, a couple years ago when uh, Eddie Redmayne pulled off that upset over, over Michael Keaton, who should have won, his movie won, yeah. and all of those things, uh, Eddie ran a brilliant ground game. Oh, brilliant. He was, I mean, it was kiss, kissing every baby, slapping every back in town. I think... Michael I, came up. Michael came up at the end. I talked to so many Academy okay. voters the night before the Oscars, and I said, who'd you vote for? Oh, I voted for Michael. He deserves it and all that stuff. I go, wow. But in my mind, and that's why I stuck with Eddie all through that thing, Eddie had won it two months earlier. Eddie had started so early. I know, I know. And Eddie had his votes in the bag. Spotlight, I would say, pulled off this win last year because it had the better ground game than Revenant. Yeah. Uh, there was a party Again, every night, it was sometimes a swell. two or three. There was yeah. a swell, but mm -hmm. I think camp, smart campaigning has a lot to yeah. do with it. Who's running the best ground game among, among the actresses? Uh, among the actresses? Uh, I have to say Emma Stone. She's the one that's been out there the most from the beginning. She's been the trooper. She's been the one since the uh, fall festivals at every Q&A they ask her to do, at every event. Uh, if she can be there, she's there. She's also had the ability to do that. She's not off working. Natalie Portman is pregnant, you know, and she's got kids and she lives in, you know, in L.A. and she's taking them to school and doing things. So she's out there, but not in the same way that Emma Stone. A Emma is at the parties, at the events. She's working. She's at, been she's, there I and know. charming people and doing all of that. So I would say between those two, uh, the ground game uh, goes there. Not to Annette Benning, who's high class and also, I think, conscious of her status at the Academy, doesn't want to come out like, you know, uh, campaigning like crazy and that sort of thing. Uh, and I don't think she's ever been that way. So, um, you know, uh, it does appear that you do need to campaign a lot these days. That's what people unless expect. Unless you're Monique or, yeah. or unless you're Mark yeah. Ryland. But Monique, but again, we know that for the we... 950th time, <laughs> Monique's non-campaign was a campaign. <laughs> right. That's true. That's true. Yes. And by the way, I loved Monique in Almost Christmas this year. I thought she was terrific. What was Almost Christmas? It was a Christmas comedy that came out oh, in are November. Are we going to see it in, Raz in the Razzies? Uh, no, it's really good. Oh, okay. And she was so funny. I really, why are we talking about Monique? I don't know. <laughs> we, we often wander off the ranch yes, here. Yeah. But uh, we will pick up this discussion yeah. uh, in, in a week or two to see where the race is then. Yes.